So I wanted to continue the talk about integrating the thoracic spine or specifically thoracic extension rotation into your rotator cuff work. First, I'll show you a partner drill that's super effective for thoracic extension as well as just opening up the chest. And then I'm going to go into two scapular drills. Chris is the awesome volunteer. Remember, life happens in front. So in this stretch, all we're doing is reversing in front to opening and extending. So Chris is going to cross one leg over, let the hips come off the ground freely. Focal point, hand on the front of the chest, front of the shoulder. Chris is really <laughs> very mobile, so this is an easy stretch for him, but pressure's here and on the knee. So what you're working towards is opening up the chest, opening up the thoracic spine, and then simultaneously pressing this knee down towards the ground gradually so that the lumbar spine also gets a chance to rotate. How do you feel, Chris? You just got a little bit of an adjustment there. Now, starting off, when your normal person tight, the knee might be up here, the chest might be so tight that he's up here. That's a bit more of a realistic starting point for folks. So you've got to be really respectful. Just apply enough pressure to start getting movement towards the floor in both directions. And your partner's job is to rotate the chest up towards the ceiling as you're getting pressure down. So you can apply from here, contract, relax. You can go static holds, you can go pulses, you can cover all those bases, but his job is to actively open up his chest and let his pelvis and his knees go. When he comes back up and we would then do the other side, he feels like he's gone from this kind of a position into something that resembles being able to extend and rotate. Now we're gonna go into a couple of scap drills. So remember, the rotator cuff is cool, but it's very much integrated to the scapula. So I'm gonna teach you a couple of drills that I learned from Dale Buckberger many years ago. Dale's a Chiron and a PT. I call this one flying man. So this one integrates the scapula with the cuff, which you want. So all you've gotta do, prop your chest up, that just helps with a little bit of extension, keep the glutes tight, all the standard stuff, palms up, squeeze the shoulder blades in and down. That's called setting the scapula. From there, lift up. Scapular is still set, they're still in and down, that's lower and middle traps. From here, we go gradual external rotation. And the more we get up here, now we've got the back side of the cuff, and now we're getting into supraspinatus. We come back down, reset the shoulder blades so they're now in and down. I'm depressing them. Keep them retracted as the hands touch the floor, gradually lower. So just to speed that up, retract, depress, lift, now we've got the cuff really working. Supraspinatus comes in right about there. Control the way down. So that's one example of a drill integrating the scapula with the rotator cuff. It's surprisingly difficult once you add weights. These are only two pound dumbbells, but the same mechanics apply. I dare you to do 25 reps with two pound dumbbells. <laughs> so that's scapular cuff integration drill number one. This one's more kind of pure rotator cuff, sideline. I call this one thrower's drill because it's actually meant to train stability in pitchers in that direction. So I call it thrower's drill for that reason. Elbows got to be up on the side of the hip. We externally rotate first. So pull the scapula in and down. Again, it's not just rotator cuff, it's scapular cuff. Now I press up, gradual internal rotation down into the floor. That's training the cuff eccentrically, as well as the supraspinatus. And again, it's just meant overall to train the humeral head properly so that as you throw stuff, your muscles get strong enough so that the humerus doesn't fall out of the shoulder socket. Always a good benefit there. <laughs> That's the drill. I call it thrower's drill. Again, you can see I'm still integrating the scap on the back side and controlling protraction on the way down. So again, remember, when you're training rotator cuff stuff, integrate thoracic extension with scapular and thoracic work and the cuff, and then isolate the cuff. Put it all together. Hope that helped.